The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 22nd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Of course, if you can't call in and you have a question, well, please go ahead and send me an email. For that, send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, like Peter, if I'm Park City did, please go ahead and send me a ping, private or otherwise. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. You got the Dow trading down to slightly off 19 points. Russell's off six. Semis are up. Uh, big. Uh, when I say big, they're up nine tenths percent or 28 points. The NDX 100 up 35, about three tenths. Flat basically for the S&P up to gold is up 12 bucks. Silver 37 cents. Lights recruit off a buck 69, up a buck 69. Natural gas down nine cents. 30 your treasury up a. Uh, Five ticks printing out at one thirty oh four. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside. You've got First Citizens Bank shares up fifteen bucks, two point six percent. Karuna Therapeutics up nearly fourteen bucks. Lululemon nine bucks and change. Nvidia up seven and change, nearly three percent move to the upside. And GameStop up six dollars. That's a thirty seven percent move. HubSpot is the leader to the downside, off nearly ten bucks or two and a half percent. SBA Communications about six bucks, two percent. Netflix about six bucks, one two percent. Service now five bucks, one percent. Charter communications off five, about one and a half. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. We're not expecting much action or we should not expect much action in the market until about two o'clock. And then fireworks, I suspect, really get going at around the uh, 2 30 time frame when Powell comes on to explain whatever the decision was and the rationale behind the decision and really what's next, what the plans ahead are. So we, let's begin by taking a look at um, the ES mini. Let's go move over. I'll take a look at the well actually while i'm on this chart here let me answer the first question that came in which from peter in park city and you wanted to take a look at the new york stock exchange the advanced klein oscillator his specific question is has it reached an overbought status and the answer to that is no 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 not even close so if we take a look at a great question and we have had, you know, really nice rally yesterday. Rally, the, the market breadth in the rally yesterday was very strong, very positive. So the question that Peter's asking about is uh, contained in the second panel. So we've got four different panels out here. That second panel has the advanced decline oscillator. The advanced decline oscillator is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Whew, that's a mouthful. Now, when this gets down to minus 150, and right now it's up at minus 33. When it gets down to that minus 150 level, it gets into the oversold uh, area. When it gets to the plus 150 level, Peter, that's when we start to get into an overbought condition market out there. Now, in this case here, if we take a look at New York Stock Exchange, we saw price moving lower and we saw the advanced decline oscillator 
making higher lows out there. That's the type of divergent that identifies a bottom. New York Stock Exchange actually confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom out there. We can take a look at that. We won't go over to that right now, but we can take a look at that during the show today. Depends on what questions are coming in, what I can actually remember to do. But the answer to your question is here's where we have conflicts in the market or divergences, additional divergences, Peter. And that is that the advanced decline oscillator is still below its zero threshold level. It's at minus 32. It needs to get above zero, and it needs to be above zero for two consecutive days to suggest that it's now the buyers that have control. So with regard to the general markets and the advanced client oscillator, not only is it not near overbought, it tells us that sellers are the ones that are still in control of the general markets. Now, that's opposed, that's the opposite of what we have here with regard to the spot volatility index, the left-hand panel chart. That center blue line is the 50-day exponential moving average. When price is below that, the spot volatility that is, that is bullish for the S&P 500. If we take a look at the S&P 500, its market breadth just recently changed over to positive for the daily time frame. It is still negative for the weekly. So, for example, on a weekly time frame, the S&P 500 has 63 instruments trading above the top of a profile. That's resistance. That would be a bullish signal. Whereas we have 204 trading below the bottom of their profile. And that is a bearish type signal out there. Uh, did it was a minus 11%? Thanks, Peter. I'll, I'll take a look at that uh, tomorrow. I did, he actually, I, I overlooked that. It's my mind hasn't been completely whole as of late. So on the daily time frame, though, I mentioned that uh, about an hour ago or so, we did get a bullish crossover. 116 above profile, 101 below. So that's a positive, but it's not as positive. So, so we'd still have a bit of a divergence here with regard to what the S&P 500 did, is doing. With regard to the NASDAQ 100, no divergence at all. It's green lights all the way. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart on a weekly basis, 26 above, 14 below. So the, if the NDX 100 is the clue as to what the markets want to do, the NDX 100 is telling you it wants to move higher out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at market breadth. Uh, Peter asked the question, spot politics, a one-day rate of change below minus 10%. That signal then is an initiation move. Uh, that will come from this set of charts here, Peter. Uh, so I didn't have that marked in. So thanks for noting that. I, I do see that now on the chart. Uh, that is a second green line. So we've had that occur twice now. In the last comment, i just widen this up here just so it makes it a little bit easier for everybody to see and also for me to just simply to draw on that line. So I'm going to take that line. So it's an initiation move. And you can see that the first signal that took place back on March 16th, that has certainly led to higher price. So, Peter, if you want to use this as a indicator as to what the uh, markets want to do, uh, you know, it's initiation to higher price is really the signal out there, which matches. So now I really should go take a look at that NYSE um, uh, chart and show you the. Uh, so here's this chart. Here. Let me just stay with this. Uh, and I'll just back it up a bit now. Uh, the blue the blue arrows on this chart represent instances where the spot volatility says a one day rate of change above plus 10 percent. Those are the blue uh, those are the blue uh, arrows out there, and they typically lead to either a bounce or a bottom inside of the S and P 500. Whereas when you close below the spot volatility somewhere below minus 10 percent, we get that initiation uh, signal out there. So that's what it means. But again, these markets. Um, you know, I, I'm not really, I don't have a clear, I don't see a clear signal out here that tells us right now what the markets want to do. Here, here's another example. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember, I'll do it during the break here. Let me just switch over real quickly to these ES mini charts. And I'll give you the number to be watching here. And that is uh, at the price level 40.43.25 which has been tested. That is a TD9 count top, both for the five hour and the four hour time frame chart. Closes above those for those time frames, which suggests the market wants to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, still a mixed bag out there. No big changes. Don't expect much in the way of changes throughout the uh, session. I did pop up the New York Stock Exchange chart out here. You'll notice that um, two days ago, uh, what this generated was a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. The TD9 call, you see that here, but that is not the uh, plan. That's not the plan. That is not the pattern that identified the uh, bottom. If In fact, we all have really two bottoms. You have a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern out here. So here's the A to B point. Take us to that uh, D. We just simply move that over to where the, uh, the C point was. And you can see this is more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside. Now that gets confirmed with a bullish reversing candle, a bullish reversing candle out there. And we've got a couple of them. So you've got bottoms. And more importantly right now is that price is above its red oscillator and change line. So that's a positive for the New York Stock Exchange. If we take a look at the last time a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom signal formed here for the New York Stock Exchange, it was back on the trading day of uh, October the uh, 13th. And obviously that led to a very nice rally. Will this do the same? Well, right now it's got some of the uh, same characteristics. What I mean by that is we do have now price above its red oscillator and change line. And that suggests at least trying to run up to 15,497. That's where price originally broke down from or its most recent breakdown area. Um, again, and if price takes out, uh, the lows of the New York Stock Exchange, well, then we'd be looking at 13,607 as a, a target area. But that's not what the uh, current uh, signals are uh, for the uh, for the New York Stock Exchange out there. So, again, we got different messages out here. You've got initiation move from the spot volatile X. That says higher price. This, the New York Stock Exchange is saying it wants higher price when you look at the chart pattern. When you take a look at the internals, the advanced client oscillator, it's saying not so fast out there. And that's why I think it's a little bit of a, a difficult uh, call. Uh, let's go. Um, so there's a, a question that came in. Oh, I was back at the ES Mini. So let me just finish that off. I kind of went to it and we went to the breakout there. So let me at least do that. 
that would be this panel right here. So if we take a look at the ES Mini, right? So it closed above the top of its daily profile yesterday. We took a look at the A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, or at least we did that in the uh, uh, 10, uh, 11 o'clock market uh, update out there. So that's the pattern that is in play. We take a look at what is holding price back right now. Well, if we just simply look to the four and five hour charts, you will see TD9 count tops that are out here. Now, that simply has led to a sideways move. But nonetheless, that is resistance, 40, 43, 25. So for those time frames, you need to see a close above those levels in order to suggest a breakout. Now, slightly above that area, 40, 30. No, I take that back. 40, 43 is going to be the key level. That would also then take us above 40, 39. And where price would then at least target should that unfold you'd have to say it's this uh, 2 a uh, 2 p.m swing point for march the 6th and that high out there is at 4119 so that's what i see when i take a look at the es mini now the question that had come in about the es mini let me get to that that is from vic i believe uh fish and river view perfect uh and the question is do you see the potential of a spike up and then sell off this is presumably after either powell's announcement or his uh, press conference and if so at what level on the spy would you uh, look to go short? Uh, what would you predict could be the top on the SPY today, given the Fed? So you're specifically asking about the SPY. We're inside here at the ES mini charts out here. The spot, the spike that you really want to pay attention, I'm going to change patterns out here. We'll come back and take a look at a, a couple of different charts. The spike that you really want to pay attention to, um, uh, Fish, is going to be from the NQ. I know you're asking me about the Q or the, you know, the SPY for the S&P or the ES mini and you're, you know, in the Qs here, but, you know, and you can look at the Qs, but it's really the NQ that I'm paying attention to. And what I mean by that is that the NQ closed inside its swing point from February 2nd with volume, and it did that back on March 16th trading session. Since then, price has been trading with inside that swing point. So what I at least expect is at least a spike of that high. And that high is 13,068. Now, um, would I sell once once that happened? Not necessarily, because if price closed above 13,068, that's a possibility. We just took a look at market breadth for the NQ out there. So for the NASDAQ 100, there's nothing really stopping it from moving higher other than perhaps, you know, the decision of the Fed, what market participants decide to do with regard to selling off. But a close above 13068 out there is going to set up an A to B equal CD to the upside. And it's a big one. It's a pretty big one out here. That one to one would get us into, I'll just use this low out here, will get us into approximately, and that, we don't have a signal yet that this is going to happen but that would take us up to the 14003 level so if you're asking me where would you sell or potentially sell it sold more up towards 14003 getting back to its highs out there than you would on just a spike now maybe we get a spike a uh, move above so let's go over and take a look at the qqq chart we can do the same thing with the es mini but let's take a look at the Qs because I believe this is where you're going to get your better information from. It's the strong dog out here. We can see in the case of the Qs where I've got this, and this is the, here, I'll just expand it out. If we take a look at the uh, uh, purple fuchsia uh, arrow out there, you can see that's the day that price moved into, closed into that swing point from February the 2nd. The volume on that swing point, pretty big, 83 million shares out there. So you'll want to watch the volume at the end of the day. But if price closes above that, so I do expect that to get spiked or it should get spiked only because the market continues to trade with inside that swing point. We got into there with volume that typically indicates at least a test of that high. A test rejection of that high on lighter volume would uh, say, OK, you can't bust them up. You try to bust them down. But what price would have to do here, Fish, in the queues would have to close back below that swing point. Uh, and that's at 306.73. So that's one thing that I would be watching out there. If we look at the spies, the spy is uh, trading uh, with inside a profile out there. So it's much different than the ES Mini. Which one is right? I, I don't know which one is right. You know, you use them both. Use the information available to you. So where is resistance, which is really the question that uh, somebody would want to perhaps have a, a short position inside the S&P, the SPY, the ES Mini, whatever it is, that would be at 404.77. If the SPY closes above 404.77, then that's telling you that it wants higher price. We'd be taking like an A to B equals CD patterns to the perhaps to the upside as well. So that would be the level to be watching for on the spy 404.75. If it closes above uh, 40, I'm sorry 404.77. If it closes above 404.77, that's telling you it wants higher price. 
Remember that spot volatility right now closed yesterday, and now today is trading well below that 50-day uh, exponential moving average. Of course, that can change at day's end, but that's what I would be looking for out there. Short of that, it would really be going back to those ES mini charts and looking for some type of pattern to uh, form out there on a maybe a shorter term time frame. And that's nothing that we have in place as we speak right now. As we take a look at these charts, here's a 10 minute, a 15 minute, and, and there's nothing more out here than the resistance area up at that 40 43 25 so i do hope that that helps you out thanks so much for writing in and absolutely god bless david white out there so thanks so much uh, vic and have a, a wonderful wednesday um i'll go live i guess i didn't do that there we are back here here, here are those es mini charts and you can just take a look at them there's just not much action here, here, the es mini this morning uh, we had a TD9 count top that formed at 7.30, and all price did was pull back and tested its breakout level, 40.29.25. So we're not getting even any short-term type signals out here to tell us what the tell in the marketplace is. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. A mixed bag, 37 to the downside for the Dow. S&P's up 2, NASDAQ's up 46. Russell is down 10. We're taking a look at the charts here for the Russell 2000. Jimmy D inside the Tiger's Den identified or mentioned that the IWM has rolled over, and it most certainly has. If we take a look at the charts here, Jimmy, for the equity future contract, and we focus on the daily time frame, let me just expand this chart out so we're all looking at exactly the same thing. What we can see here is that what price did was it ran right into resistance at that red oscillator and change line. Now, how to interpret that, a red oscillator and change line, this is where Dave White and I, so Dave was colorblind. So and we, we take, we'd be talking about the oscillator and change line. Uh, we'd be looking at a chart or what have you, and, and, you know, and I'd say, well, it's red and green. He's like, I, I, there's a lot of people out there that are colorblind like me. And then, and then there were issues with regard to dashes and dots and everything. In any event, I leave this uh, here red and green. And uh, when the line is red, it tells us that a price oscillator is below zero. That itself is a uh, is kind of a bearish condition. But it really, when I say kind of, how do I identify whether it's bearish or not? Well, the easy way is to create an oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line, in this case here, um, when it's red, that's letting you and I know that that price oscillator is below zero. Green, price oscillator is above zero. Now we have to pull it apart even further. Price being below the oscillator and change line tells us we now have a falling price oscillator below zero. And those are bearish conditions. So here's where, again, we have a divergence. The ES Mini and the NQ are telling us they want to move higher. But if we take a look at the Russell 2000, it's saying, I'm really not sure what you guys are talking about. Yes, I formed that nice TD9 count bottom out there. And then I just simply took price right up to resistance, that oscillator and change line. Now, the reason to take a look at this, if the market does move higher, one of the levels that you'll want to watch, okay, is let's say is this weak see, which would be the Russell 2000 for clues. Now, that oscillator and change line, is currently printed about 1797. That's going to change by you know a buck maybe or two if price moves up and down. But generally speaking, well, let's just use yesterday's high. If price were to close above yesterday's high, then the Russell 2000, yesterday's high by the way is 1808.20. That's telling us price wants to move up to 1927. Likewise, if price closes below the uh, low from a couple of days ago, that low being 1708, that tells us it wants lower price. Now, the other aspect or the other important thing about taking a look at these charts out here, Jimmy, and why I put these up is because if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Now, the weekly time frame chart, this is a pretty cool chart to look at. Why? We can take a look at the descending price channel that price was in. And then it breaks out of that. It breaks out uh, uh, firmly. Uh, on the uh, trading day of uh, January the 13th. What it does do, now this formed on a weekly basis, now it's formed a nice roads momentum indicator bottom uh, out there. And and so and that's a, that's an important uh, bottom to be paying attention to. The actual support level, just so you know, uh, with regard to this pattern, is going to be at 1661.60. So maybe you just jot that down on your pad of paper. A close below that, um, would be a, a real negative thing on a monthly basis, a weekly basis. I'm looking at the weekly chart. But what I really wanted to show you here was that this forms an A to B equals CD to the upside. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. That created that sell the D point pattern. It was confirmed with a bearish reversal candle. Now, what price then also did was it has pulled back and it has basically tested and rejected that descending price channel. When you break out of a price channel, this is one of the things that Bud Rolfs talked to us. When you break out of a price channel, odds favor that price is going to pull back at some point in time and test that. And what you're looking for is the test and rejection. Right now, at least as of Wednesday at 1130 in the morning, that's what we have for this week. This is subject to change. It's a weekly chart. We really need to see Friday's close. But what I can share with you at the moment is you've got a solid bottom on the weekly time frame, and you now have price pulling back to a level that should hold that support that so far has held the support. Now, when you go take a look at the monthly time frame chart, you have a TD nine count bottom that is in place out here. That low, which it should be, I think is gonna match the low I gave you, 1661.60. So real key low, both for the longer term, the weekly and the monthly time frames out there. And of course, we took a look at the daily. So that red oscillator and change line says you're not out of the woods just yet, but boy, it's got some real strength out there as this is trying to bottom. We take a look at those patterns for that weekly and that daily time frame out there. Now, there's also a new profile that formed, uh, which is another reason I pulled this chart up for you. I most certainly wanted to share that with you. So 1722.70 is the bottom of that profile. Uh, 1766.80 is the center, and the top is at the, uh, where is the top? 1825.70. 
So those are the new profiles for the Russell 2000. Uh, and uh, best of luck to you, however it is that you are trading it. Um, let's see if we've got any questions that have come in. A slow day for questions. Uh, let me see here. No, none by uh, email. So uh, let's go. What do we want to go take a look at next? Let's go take a look at, we close out this chart here. Let's go take a look at Goldilocks and see what the, it's signaling to you and I. And let's look at the same set of charts. We've got a little bit longer time frame out here. So we'll fire those up here momentarily. What is uh, gold doing? Where's gold? Here we go. Uh, and uh, oh, by the way, I, we already—I think I mentioned silver is attempting to form a new profile. Gold's profile, though, is solid. It's in. It's the one that was trying to form uh, yesterday out there. And so, on a daily time frame, and you want to certainly note these levels at 1867. Even Stephen, you've got support at 1922.50 is the center of that profile. It's also lining up with that uh, green oscillator and change line in the top, which price is trading below right now is 1959. I do have a bottoming pattern. I do not have a topping pattern out here. So I think this is just a normal retracement. The likely target for gold to spike to the downside, I would say it would be 1922.50. And if it really gets uh, its mojo to the downside, then it would be 1867. But if gold is going to remain uber bullish out there, we'll call it, uh, we should see 1922 get tested, rejected, and price moves higher. And really what that could do is set up the C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, we have an A to B equals CD to the upside inside of the weekly time frame. But price, uh, so has it fully taken effect uh, just yet? I'm going to say the answer is no, because yesterday, uh, yesterday, last week's close, just slightly above the top of that weekly profile, may have been a false breakout. Don't know. We'll need to see. But a close above 1975.20 is then going to set up a A to B equals CD to the upside on a weekly basis with the initial price projection in the 2135 level. And if we take a look at gold on a monthly basis, although this is a continuous contract where price is stumbling, turns out, is the low of the swing point from March of 2022 when we had the highest high for gold. And that's at that level of, uh, well, let me give you that number. I mean, we're, we're right there. And that is at 1950, even Stephen, we're at 1952 right now. A monthly close above that, you get back inside that swing point. That suggests you at least go test that high. Maybe you take that level out. On the intraday charts out here, what do we have for uh, Goldilocks? We don't have much, really. Um, when I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, There's, I see an A to B equals CD pattern. What I don't see is a bearish reversal candle. That looks kind of uh, bullish out there. The 60-minute time frame chart looks bullish. Price is above uh, profile resistance. The 120-minute chart is uh, kind of neutral at this moment. It's sitting right at that oscillator and change line, trying to make a decision as to what it wants to do. From a uh, weekly perspective, do I have the consecutive counts? Why don't I? Oh, I do right here. So here, and I've got it, is the continuous contract. This is the daily time frame. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a surprise to see gold close lower and uh, get two consecutive bars to the downside. That really wouldn't break anything. Uh, what does gold do on the weekly basis? Let me see here. Consecutive day, weeks up and down. So that's three consecutive weeks up, kind of the two to three bar reaction. So... You know, a lower close this week would just kind of be normal inside of uh, Goldilocks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back, uh, folks, so we got a couple of requests that have come in. Let's get to those. The first one is a take a look at Proterra Inc. Ticker symbol there is uh, PTRA. Uh, not a lot of happy campers out here. Um, it did hit its uh, all time lows um, late last week on Friday, I believe that was on the uh, 16th. No, it was on Thursday when it did that. Uh, now, what it was also doing at the same time, Bob in Spokane, it was uh, completing a TD9 count pattern. How about that? So it does it on the bar following bar number nine. That says that low is really important to watch, that low being 107. Now what we have is new profile that is formed. The new profile shows that we have support at 125. Uh, the bot the center is at 143 and the top is at 161. You'll notice that price closed above the top of its profile yesterday, Bob. That's a bullish signal. When we do form roads momentum indicator bottoms, roads uh, TD9 count bottoms, buy the D point bottoms, um, when we finish those patterns, the first target typically to the upside is either going to be the oscillator and change line or profiles should there be some profiles or oftentimes there's not. So now that we know that we're above the top of the profile, Bob, the next price target of resistance is up at a buck ninety. If price can close above a buck ninety, then odds favor that it will go at least and fill the gap. But one ninety right now is a real resistance level for this instrument. It does not have any kind of weekly bottom. It does not have any kind of a monthly bottom out there, but it most certainly does on the daily time frame. On a short term chart, a 30 minute time frame chart, what we see out here is this just triggered a road momentum indicator top. Now, it did that at 11 a.m. It's now 11.43. It's the 30-minute time frame out here. And, um, you know, it's just a sideways move. Price is above uh, the top of its 30-minute uh, profile. That's bullish. It's above a green oscillator and change line. That's a uh, bullish signal. Price pulled back after the uh, line changed color, test and reject that line. That's a bullish signal. So it's really neutral here with regard to the 30-minute uh, time frame. Of course, what you'd like to see is you'd like to see the roads momentum indicator pattern fail, but you really want to see 184 fail. That's the uh, on a 30-minute basis. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So 184 is another area for you to watch with ticker symbol PTRA out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for the request, and have a wonderful Wednesday. The next request coming in from Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den. Wants to take a look at Kathy Woods, A R. 
ARKK. ARKK at the moment is trading out about 39.59. It is consolidating with inside its uh, daily profile. This is the ARK Innovation ETF out here. So what's its signal to you and I? Well, this formed a Gartley buy pattern. It did that on the trading day of uh, March the 13th. We had both the A to B equals CD. If you don't see that, I'll just simply draw that in here. Here's A to B, very easy to do. Then we can see a retracement up into a high out there. We're going to use that as a C point. This is more than a one to one A to B equals CD. That uh, 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 bullish reversal, bullish engulfing candle forms at its breakout level of 34.81. That's the beauty of the TD nine. One of the beauties of the TD nine count pattern out there. Uh, and now we just have a consolidation going on. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart has a Roach Mintum indicator bottom pattern, price consolidating with inside its profile. The monthly time frame chart has a buy the D point pattern that formed in January of uh, 2023. Only a close below, I gotta move this over here, only a close below. 29.43 would negate that signal. So you got a bottom signal on the monthly, bottom signal on the uh, weekly chart, bottom pattern on the uh, daily time frame chart with price just consolidating. So it may just consolidate uh, when we take a look at a gem line, and that's going to be between about 40.36 all the way down to 35.43. But knowing that that TD9 count breakout level was tested and rejected, I'd say the consolidation is between 40.36 right now and 34.81. So I hope that helps you out. Thank you very, very much for that request and your suggestion, which I did pass on to the uh, folks inside the Tiger's Den as part of a uh, tribute there to our good friend, David White. Dan inside the Tiger's Den uh, wants to take a look at NVIDIA. So let's pop up NVIDIA. NVDA is the uh, ticker symbol out there. And Dan's question is, what daily bar do you have on NVIDIA for the TD9 counts out here? So that's going to populate momentarily. I am in bar number six. Dan, let me uh, just simply expand this chart out for you. And we'll take a look at it. And uh, so, yeah, I've got this as bar number six. I show, I show, um, uh, I show uh, bar number one in this instance here forming on March the 15th. So uh, I'm not sure which bar that uh, you've got out there. And I'll just make sure. Let me just reload all the historical data just to make sure there is nothing. It should have loaded properly, but just to make sure there's not anything else. Sometimes there is in the way data gets uh, transmitted. Yeah, I am still in bar number six to the upside on the uh, daily uh, time frame out there. Um, but you, and you still have that Roach Mintum indicator signal, but <laughs> you need a bearish reversal candle in order to get this thing to be bearish. We are taking a look at NVIDIA right now. Now, this looks like super strong. When I say super strong, this completed a TD9 count topping pattern last week. Now, we are trading above it right now. I do not know where we will be come uh, Friday. But a close above that high, last week's high, last week's high was 263.99 tells us about a very strong upward momentum move for the weekly time frame. Well, I don't want you to get too overly um, enthused about what I just said, but it tells us about the, at least the next direction, and there's enthusiasm behind that move, which then should take us up to 289.46. So NVIDIA, strong like bull out there, especially when you take a look at that weekly performance. Now, if we just take a look at short term, any kind of tells out here with regard to what it may want to do on an intraday basis. Well, you've got a TD9 count top. That's in place right now. A close above 270.77 on a 30 minute basis negates that pattern and says that price wants to move higher out there. Otherwise, what price should do is pull back and test that oscillator and change line at around 267.61. That would you know that would basically be nothing out there so nvidia looks very strong no top for the uh, daily no top in fact the weekly is saying i don't even know why you guys have been talking about a top here and the reason that we are mr weekly or mrs weekly is because it's not friday it's only wednesday and you need to prove yourself and that'd be a close of last week's side to say we're headed to 289.46 inside of nvidia mrna is a request out here that's coming in from uh, elo mrna so let's go take a look at it. The question is, there is no question. It just says MRNA. So let's go take a look at its chart, see what kind of patterns we have here. On a daily basis, we have a sell the D point pattern that formed yesterday. Here we'll draw on the A to B pattern. This was a TD9 count bottom. That's where we're going to start the A to, a to B leg. Then we're just simply going to move that all the way over to the C point out there. This was more than a one to one. That was confirmed yesterday because that was the bearish dark cloud cover. Folks, you want to learn seven seven bullish reversal candles 
because the exact opposite of those candles are bearish. So if you can learn them one way, the exact opposite is easier. And if you do that, that's really all that you need to know. There is a plethora of, uh, of uh, candlesticks out there. Um, uh, David White had a library. It was like 30, 40, 50. Uh, we tried doing some tests on it, on, on my system. I still come back to you. You just need to know those seven. Seven bullish, seven bearish, and you'll be just fine. And if you apply that to whatever patterns it is you, you trade, they will help you when those patterns are completing to let you know that. So in this case here, what should take place? Well, price should pull back to its first level of support. That's going to be 147.58. That's the top of that profile. Below that, then we get down into about the 143.76 level out there. That's what I see when I take a look at a daily chart from Moderna. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the ticker symbol of XBI. This is for uh, Greg and uh, sent a, a, a question by email. He's looking to use XBI in order to trade uh, one of the, uh, I believe it's a triple ETF, LABU. So what we have out here, Greg, is you do have a confirmed by the D point pattern. That confirmed right back here when this piercing candle formed on uh, March the 13th. Now, the support, when you get this bullish reversal candle, it's going to be the low of the candle 
uh, that it uh, pierced. So that sets up that high volume bar that you identified. There's volume there of 24 million shares. So that low is real key level of support. Price would have to close below 73.87 to negate its buy the D point pattern. Now what price is doing is testing a level of support. It happens to be the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of that profile is at uh, 74.91, 74.91. Um, actually, we're really trading at 74.87. I'm looking at a chart that's got uh, more. So I must have a little bit of a data feed here. But, um, you know, if you close below, so here's what you do. If price closed below 74.91, that tells you that it's going to at least go or should go test that swing low out there. And it's got big volume. So what you'd ideally like to see. And on some type of short-term chart out here, and I'll just put up the 30-minute, you'd like to see some type of bottom forming on an intraday chart, and we don't have that as we speak right now, as pre and, and that level of support to hold the bottom of that profile, and that could take you into a position. Um, so that's what I would be waiting for and watching for, and that is in the case of uh, XBI. So I hope that helps you out, Greg. Thanks so much for writing in. Last question is going to be for Duncan Steve inside the Tigers. Then he wants to take a good Google. So what we have to do is actually get to the Google charts. That'll make it much easier. And here we can see that Google looks strong. Looks like it wants to head up to 108. 82. You're trading above yesterday's high. Um, this is no, uh, there's no topping signal on a, a daily time frame out here. So this should continue to move higher. Uh, it's trading into or towards a swing point. I see this is the swing point for the trading session February 2nd. That's an important swing point. 46 million shares on that uh, day. So far today, in a couple hours of trading, 8.3 million. So it looks like it's going to be much lighter in volume, but nonetheless. It's trading inside that swing point. 108.82 looks to be the next stop to the upside for Google. Folks, remember, sell when you can, not when you have to. Rest in peace, our friend, David White. We'll be right back. Or I won't. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>